So I have approximately 300 plus, maybe now 320 plus orchids in my collection, but I have collections within my collection as well. And I'm wondering if anybody that grows orchids finds that they have the same. They have their general collection and then they have a cluster that is considered a collection within a collection. Let me know if you have a similar thing going on within your collection. Secondly, the collection within the collection has a rota for maintenance, for care. I mean, the general day-to-day -day looking at my orchids is like three to four times a day, winter and summer. But then a collection within a collection has a rota where I take them out, I look at them all separately, individually, more closely, in more detail to see if they need any extra maintenance against bugs, etc. So my rota here is for a very, very special set of orchids within my general collection. And they were gifted to me by the Orchid Room, Melissa McCarthy and Michael McCarthy, when I was going through something extremely difficult and they got together and thought I would need a pick-me-up and that these orchids might just do the trick. And boy, did they. They picked me up uh, considerably. So I wanted to do an update those of you that have seen my videos of my tours, I point them out every once in a while. Here's this, here's that. And during my last tour, I thought, no, 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 it's time to consolidate them into a video. Also to show the Orchid Room, Melissa Walker and Michael McCarthy, their progress. Because this is a very special collection of orchids within my collection. So what I'm going to do is first, of, oh my goodness, hi. <laughs> I am not good at saying hello straight away. I just run with a train of thought. So thank you very much for your patience with me. What I'm going to do now is set up a little bit of a staging area. Sorry for that jiggle. Get them out of the way. And let's have a look at them individually. And before I set up some staging, let's look at the really tall one. This is Dendrobium aurantiflameum which has been doing really well without any issues whatsoever. I got the orchid. It was um, in sphagnum moss on unboxing it. And well, yes, sphagnum moss is good. I grow inorganic, so we had to kind of fandangle something to make it work. But the whole development so far of the orchid, I would like to say it hasn't skipped a beat. I have it in very, very small lava rock. There's a bit of ceramis underneath for the humidity and it's in a classic semi-hydro setup. But look at that root system developing right there. And I like to consider that this setup, this pot will last for the next six years if nothing goes wrong with the orchid. I got her when this growth was teeny tiny down here Great timing for a repot because soon the roots started to push. These two canes have developed. They've gone another 30% of what their original length. They've surpassed the supporting stake that I put in. And I had contemplated on mounting this orchid, but then I thought, well, let me get used to it first. Let me know what it needs, how I can take care of it because mounting orchids in my climate is all very well if I can keep up with the watering. But I'm thinking that this isn't looking too shabby and that this Aurentiflameum can actually stay in the setup as it is and I'm not going to mess with it. I have obviously never seen it bloom. This gift came to me end of November, I believe, of 20. Well, what do you mean, I believe? My tags will tell me. The 24th of November of 20 yes and it wasn't exactly a time of year to be receiving any orchids as we were heading into winter definitely not to be messing around with repotting but none of these orchids as you will see have stalled or stopped one bit fabulous what i do with the aranti flamium here sometimes is i pinch out the little top leaf here out of the apex of the previous leaf just so that it doesn't get too kinked up. I have extremely, extremely dry air. It is now second week of April. 
and I'm at 40% humidity. Uh, we're gonna go down to 30, but I help the little leaves as they come out and I help them to get out of the apex of the leaf. On top of that, what I also do and what I'm going to do today is at this point in time, I'm very, very cautiously fertilizing. Again, sorry for that jiggle, but I'm flushing a lot just to keep the surface of the pot a little bit damp. This orchid now lives outside and what I should have done before flushing is just to give it a quick spray with my garlic infused alcohol. Doesn't look like much, but I don't want any pests coming here and taking care of the leaves as in taking the leaves down. So I've been using this garlic infused alcohol quite a bit, especially on dendrobiums, so that they will not be at risk of becoming lunch for a pest. So now I'm just gonna flush again because I don't want the alcohol to be landing on the roots and desiccating the roots because I'm not sure if I can show you. It's already happened where I wasn't quick enough. Let me see. You see all that there? That is from the alcohol landing on the roots and also desiccating the roots. So I needed to flush after applying the alcohol. But you get the point. It's doing superbly. So happy with it. Thank you to all of you for this beauty. Now let's move on to another candidate that I want to actually put on a little pedestal because I'm A, very proud of it. Secondly, it deserves it. Make sure I see what I'm doing in the background there and knock, don't knock anything off. Let's have a look at Ceratostylus philippinensis. Look at her. <laughs> I know, I know, it looks weird, but it works. This little Ceratostylus is a replacement for a rubra that the orchid room sent me a while ago, and I didn't get it right. It passed, and I felt terrible. You get a gift, or at least when I get gifts, I feel so responsible and the pressure is really on to not lose the orchids that were given to me as a gift. Well, the rubra, it didn't work, but look at this with my little serrata stylus. I made a little dome of a plastic bottle upside down, carved out an edge and just snapped it around the pot like a sleeve to maintain the super high humidity that this orchid needs. So it's a terrarium, like a, an exclusive terrarium specifically for this orchid. And what I do with this one is I go in, I have a very, very weak fertilizer when I do fertilize, but I just spray the base of the orchid like that and leave her alone. Mainly I have plain RO water and now that the growing season is coming into full swing, I have a spray bottle separate with 100 parts per million of fertilizer also for other orchids. So now I'm sort of expanding a little bit and not being too general with my 300 parts per million. But look at those roots in there. Now that the sun has come out, I hope you can see all the little fine hair roots. When we did the potting up, they were visible and just starting to extend. But look at how that network is now in the pot. What I have this one in is a huge base of lava rock on the bottom just to crock it so that I don't waste so much akadama. And the rest of it is akadama and terrarium grit mixed. 30% terrarium grit and 70% akadama. And look at how all that new growth is coming out. All these leaves here, two back there. And some have already matured since the repotting. So that's these guys right here. And look at all those roots. Gosh, I hope you can see that. There's a whole fine network of roots in there going into the Akadama and living their best life with my little primitive dome 
which allows for aeration and a very high humid environment just for this orchid. Love it. I am so happy to be able to say this is working and she's doing great. So maybe we'll see some blooms soon because they are quite floriferous once they're happy in their environment. There's more going on here. Yes, I'm very excited. So Serata stylus, Philippinensis, is doing great. Now to a replacement plant that these tres amigos, as I called them in my unboxing video. Oh, oops. We need another little stool as opposed to this guy. So excuse me for one moment. We have another option available. So avid watchers of my channel know that I'm into Rapiculus Lelias like a bonnet on a car. <laughs> there is a creepy, creepy affection for Rapiculus Lelias. And Floralia, early in 2020, there was a big mix up because of the cooties. And I got an order from Floralia that was supposed to be arriving in April, but it only arrived in August or September or something like that. Lelia gracilis was part of that order from Floralia and it was super, super weak. Now I say was, I still have its piece, but these three were thinking ahead in the eventuality that my Gracilis from Floralia would not pull through and sent me a possible replacement. And look at her. That is what I call a healthy orchid. This entire order came from Großrechner Orchideen in Germany, my favorite nursery. So the three of them even <sighs> took that into consideration to order from my favorite nursery, which ah, so much went into this order. I, I'm still speechless. That's why this is a collection within a collection. But look at this Gracilis and how it's doing. I've had this new growth grow since I received it. And that had been over through the winter. It's working on its next new growth. It's not quite rooted in yet, but the roots are going down and they're pretty happy. And then there's a little second piece back here that grew a new, this new growth throughout the winter. So their gracilis is going really well. Very, very pleased because if my other pieces don't make it, then I still have a gracilis because the thoughtfulness that went behind this order, not just the circumstances as to how it came about, but how it was put together and why that touched me and still touches me to this day. So what I do with this little Gracilis here is it's been getting fertilizer. Now it's not getting as much as it did throughout the winter. I know it sounds contradictory, but it is out of season from where it came. Now I'm just flushing it through because the growths have pretty much matured, even though the other one that is still growing, there's no need to fertilize at this point. It is the first summer that it is with me. It is now living outdoors. So mainly now what I do is just flush it through and that growth is gonna be fine without extra fertilizing. Like with the other ones, it's just a little straggler from the winter maturing now. So I just flush through with plain RO water at this point in time, just to make sure that the media doesn't dry out too much at the bottom. I want these roots to stay happy and healthy. And that would be it for the Lelia Casilis as far as maintenance. And then we have something super special. We have seedlings, but it's, it's like we have big brother and little sister of the Cattleya Maxima Alba, which was sent to me by in the same order. Look at that. These two were in the same pot. This growth had just finished maturing when I got the order and it was starting to produce roots right before winter. So I took the risk to repot it. Yeah, even though timing, you know, you just think the timing of the climate is not conducive. But if the orchid says there's roots and you want to change the setup, in my case, I go for it and then I live on a prayer to make sure that I cannot 
and won't damage the roots that are developing. And look at it. This one is, has lava rock on the bottom and has a mixture of Akadama and terrarium grit at 50-50. And uh, that new growth speaks for itself. The healthy roots along the top speak for themselves. Big Brother is doing superbly and I can't stop smiling about it. So, so happy. It was one of the first tests that I had with Akadama. And then with a collection like this, it makes me nervous. But she is almost rooted in. Yes, and then at the repot, imagine that. A little one falls off the side. And then it's like, okay, I couldn't see. I mean, the roots that it had were extremely, extremely delicate and probably not fit for purpose, but still functional. How long? That was the question. There was a little leaf in the back here. When it was separated out, I'm used as a marker to say, well, that's going to drop off anyway. We now have another little leaf that is going to be failing. But look at those roots. Look at what it's been doing throughout the winter. Can you see that? This is 50 terrarium grit and 50 akadama as well in a little seedling pot and it has grown roots throughout the winter. Now it is a little slow but they're not failing. So a little sister here. <laughs> what a trooper. I love it. These two I flush big brother out with plain RO water, very, very, very easy on the fertilizer. These are seedlings. I don't, I'm testing Akadama. I want to see how it retains minerals. Akadama also has minerals in its own right. So there's a little observing balancing act going on here. But um, when I do fertilize, it's like a hundred parts per million. And then I leave it and then I flush through right afterwards as well. So the reservoir only ever has plain RO water. And this one I'm not fertilizing at all. It just gets plain RO water at 6.5 pH. So in the past, I've always been extremely, extremely like general and global with my collection. All I've ever wanted was to make my life easy. Everybody gets 300 parts per million in the summer. And in the winter, I back off because no need, depending on whether you're growing or not, etc., etc. Well, 2020 was a big learning curve for me because certain orchids did not appreciate my global approach to fertilizing. And I've become a little bit more diverse now with regards to how I treat and fertilize my orchids. And a third, as I mentioned, a third spray or a third can has come into effect and that has got a hundred parts per million. So now certain select orchids, depending on their stage of growth, maturity and whatnot, are getting a hundred parts per million as opposed to me just going radical 300 across the board. It's early days. I can't say that what I'm trying to do now is going to be uber successful. However, when it comes to this, lot of five it was four but you know we've got little sister there now claiming her stake and location and real estate they are doing well they really really are i didn't on camera flush these two because they were just done but the rest i sort of showed you what i look for regarding the maintenance and i really really hope that if you see this the orchid room melissa walker and michael mccarthy that you will be happy to see that your gift is doing extremely well. It's progressing and there are positive results. And I want to say once again, take the opportunity to say thank you. Thank you. Working with these guys on a rotor is comforting, heartwarming, and it's just the feel good factor of the three of you in my mind as I work with them. I have another collection within a collection that I will have to peel out and make an update on because I think it's only fair when somebody gifts you orchids that I take the effort, I show them, talk about them. And if anybody that had the orchids before me then says, Nina, not like that, you're doing that wrong, try it this way, then I can get help 
immediately as opposed to experimenting and getting it wrong. So there will be another collection within a collection video coming up. But for now, this is the result of six months of my orchids from Los Tres Amigos. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everybody. Thank you so very, very much for watching. Please take care and stay safe. Bye.